was Space Force delayed nearly 20 years to facilitate a Space Pearl Harbor attack. The recently established United States Space Force is widely considered to be the brainchild of President Donald Trump, which has subsequently aroused suspicion, if not outright opposition, by those believing it to be a grandiose vanity project with no genuine national security significance. However, the first proposal for a Space Force dates back to a bipartisan space commission established during the Clinton administration that delivered a detailed report on January 11, 2001, recommending a new military space service to be called Space Corps. The chief goal of the Space Corps would be to prevent a future Space Pearl Harbor. What is even more intriguing in tracking the historical origin of Space Force is that the Space Commission was headed by Donald Rumsfeld, a former Secretary of Defense from 1975 to 1977, who has a mysterious history in UFO investigations, the study and reverse engineering of captured extraterrestrial technologies, and in recruiting individuals for secret space programs. Rumsfeld's leadership of the Space Commission and his second appointment as Secretary of Defense from 2001 to 2006 under President George Bush led to Commission members believing that legislation for creating a Space Force was imminent. What happened eight months later completely derailed any hope for prospective legislation creating a Space Corps. The September 11 attack which evidence suggests was a false flag attack orchestrated by the Deep State. Only a day earlier, Rumsfeld had admitted on live TV that the Pentagon couldn't properly account for a missing $2.3 trillion. This has led to much speculation whether one of the motivations for the September 11 attack was to prevent serious investigations into the missing trillions. Given Rumsfeld's leadership role in proposing the creation of a Space Corps, his subsequent second appointment as Secretary of Defense, and his exposure of the missing trillions, a question that can be asked is whether another key purpose of the Deep State in launching the September 11 attack was to stop the creation of a Space Corps. If so, then it appears that a Space Pearl Harbor is a scenario that the Deep State has been facilitating since at least 2001, and they were laying the groundwork for US officials acknowledging such a threat while effectively doing nothing to prevent it. It's worth beginning with what the Commission report had to say about the creation of a military space service. The report's title is commissioned to assess United States national security space management and organization. And it was delivered nine days before the end of the Clinton administration on January 20, 2001. The report opens by affirming that its members were appointed in a bipartisan basis by the ranking members from both parties sitting on the armed services committees of the House of Representatives and Senate. It concentrated on space security and emphasized the importance of preventing a space Pearl Harbor from a major adversary. Quote, an attack on elements of US space systems during a crisis or conflict should not be considered an improbable act. If the US is to avoid a space Pearl Harbor, it needs to take seriously the possibility of an attack on US space systems. The nation's leaders must assure that the vulnerability of the United States is reduced and that the consequences of a surprise attack on U.S. space assets are limited in their effects. End quote. Space Commission Report, pages 8 to 9. In order to fully prepare for future contingencies in space and any surprise attacks, the Commission Report called for the establishment of a Space Corps as a new military service within the Department of the Air Force that would later evolve into a separate department. Quote, a Space Corps within the Department of the Air Force may be an appropriate model in its own right or a useful way station in the evolution towards a Space Department. One model is the Army Air Force's relationship to the Army during World War II. 
existing Air Force Space Forces, facilities, units and personnel and military space missions could be transferred to a Corps. A Space Corps could have authority for acquisition and operation of space systems, perhaps to include both Department of Defense and Intelligence Community systems, while leveraging existing Air Force logistics and support functions." End quote. What's surprising here is the remarkable similarity in what the Commission recommended with President Trump's proposal for a Space Force that was presented 18 years later. In Space Policy Directive No. 4, issued on February 19, 2019, Trump declared, quote, The Department of Defense shall take actions under existing authority to marshal its space resources to deter and counter threats in space and to develop a legislative proposal to establish a United States Space Force as a sixth branch of the United States Armed Forces within the Department of the Air Force. This is an important step forward towards a future military department for space." End quote. This two-step evolutionary process is an important clue that Space Force was not merely a spontaneous creation of Trump's that appeared to be the case the first time it was raised by him in a not really serious manner at a speech at US Marine Corps Miramar Air Station in March 2018. Quote, my new national strategy for space recognizes that space is a warfighting domain, just like the land, air, and sea. We may even have a space force. You know, I was saying it the other day because we're doing a tremendous amount of work in space. I said, maybe we need a new force. We'll call it the space force. And I was not really serious. And then I said, what a great idea. Maybe we'll have to do that. End quote. The similarities between Trump's Space Policy Directive No. 4 and the Space Commission report 18 years earlier suggest that Trump was briefed by those familiar with the report and the idea of a military space service still had serious backing within the Pentagon. It's important to emphasize the critical role played by Rumsfeld who was appointed chairman of the commission, making its recommendations for a space call. Rumsfeld's importance is outlined by the reporter John Tiopak, who wrote about the Space Commission report for Air Force magazine on March 1, 2001. Quote, Over the past decade, military space has generated a stream of reports from blue ribbon panels. However, the recommendations of this one could carry considerable weight because its chairman, Donald H. Rumsfeld, has become Secretary of Defense. Rumsfeld resigned as chairman of the panel when President Trump tapped him to head the Pentagon, a scan two weeks before the commission published its final report. However, the report is said to reflect much of Rumsfeld's thinking on space organization issues and could well serve as a blueprint for a reorganization of military space. End quote. Rumsfeld's role led to General Ronald Fogelman, a newly retired US Air Force Chief of Staff from 1994 to 1997 and prominent member of the 2001 Space Commission, publicly stating the creation of a Space Corps was imminent. Quote, the Commission's Chairman Donald Rumsfeld is now the Secretary of Defense, and so military space issues are fresh in his mind, said Fogelman. He added that some sort of restructuring likely will happen soon. If I were a betting man, I would bet you that in the Department of Defense, legislative proposal that comes to the Hill this year, this will be in there, Fogelman said. End quote. On September 10, 2001, Rumsfeld appeared on live television saying that the Pentagon could not account for $2.3 trillion in the fiscal year 1999. This was money that could not be tracked by the Pentagon Inspector General who had described similar anomalies with the Pentagon budget in 1998 and 2000. In my 2003 Black Budget Report, I explained how the missing trillions were part of a massive CIA-run, unofficial Black Budget created to fund a second Manhattan Project, 
a vast number of unacknowledged special access programs involving research and development of retrieved extraterrestrial technologies. Rumsfeld said in his interview that he would wage a bureaucratic war to bring about changes to properly track money flowing through the Pentagon. Rumsfeld's remarkable admission was overshadowed the next day by the September 11 attack. His admission raises a number of possible explanations for this sequence of events and the effective shelving of a space corps for years to come. One explanation is that Rumsfeld was among a group of white hats wanting to expose or redirect some of the black budget money flowing through the Pentagon to fund new projects such as his proposed space corps that would prevent a future space pool harbour. A second explanation is that Rumsfeld was a black hat, fully briefed about the upcoming false flag attack and wanted to release the news about the missing trillions at a time when it would be completely overshadowed by the upcoming false flag attack and the global war on terror that would subsequently dominate the Bush administration. Finally, Rumsfeld was a grey hat who had to simultaneously play the conflicting roles of running the Pentagon's global war on terror, which effectively prevented a space corps being created, while behind the scenes doing what was possible to nurture the idea of a future space corps. The latter explanation is strengthened by the circumstances surrounding Rumsfeld's sacking on December 18, 2016, due to him backing successive troop withdrawals from Iraq and opposition to the surge recommended by senior military advisers that was implemented by his successor, Robert Gates, in January 2007. Whatever the precise relationship between Rumsfeld, the missing trillions, funding a space call and the September 11 attacks are, one thing is clear. The subsequent war on terror led to Pentagon prioritizing funding for military interventions throughout the Middle East and North Africa. Potential funding for the creation of a space call was shelved and it was resurrected nearly two decades later by President Trump. In the meantime, China has secretly built a large space navy, which will soon be capable of conducting the Space Pearl Harbor envisaged in the 2001 Space Commission report. China's secret space navy was revealed by Lieutenant General Stephen Quast, US Air Force retired, in a September 2019 lecture. Quote, China is our competition. Russia is our competition. They see the power of the economy of space, and they are rushing to that future. China has already built the organization and has the strategy, the doctrine, and the technology, and the builders for their guardian force in space. They are building a navy in space with the equivalent of battleships and destroyers that will be able to maneuver and kill and communicate with dominance." End quote. Will Space Force be funded and expanded in time to prevent such an attack from occurring? Will it be able to successfully integrate a small but highly advanced number of anti-gravity spacecraft that were part of a US Air Force secret space program developed and deployed in the 1970s. Currently, the US Congress has not passed defense appropriations bills necessary for funding new projects envisaged by Space Force for 2021. The delay has led to a rebuke of the congressional delay by the Chief of Space Operations, General Ray Raymond, who is concerned that new Space Force projects will be delayed well into 2021. Is this congressional delay yet another stratagem by the deep state to slow down the rollout of Space Force in order to facilitate a debilitating Space Pearl Harbor strike by China and or another major adversary in the near future? This has been Dr. Michael Sala with exopolitics.org. If you'd like to learn more about China's secret space program, I highly recommend my book, Rise of the Red Dragon, Origins and Threat of China's Secret Space Programs. Also, on October 17, I will be leading a webinar on Rise of the Red Dragon, China's Secret Space Program, where I will discuss 
the latest information on China's efforts to build a large space navy capable of overwhelming U.S. defenses in space and launch a devastating space pearl harbor. Thank you for listening and subscribing to my YouTube channel. Aloha.